How the heck you guys doing today? Thank you so much for clicking on my video. In today's video, we're gonna be bringing you guys a Soul Tie mid-range deck. Now, this is one of the top decks in the meta right now. We'll talk about that a little bit more, but I'm so excited to bring this deck to you guys. So let's just go ahead without further ado and jump right on in. See ya. All right, how the heck are you guys, man? Um, I'm in a really good mood today because today's recording went super smooth. Um, anytime I get to play a tier one deck, top tier, uh, and show you guys, I'm really excited about it because uh, it's easy. It's easy to get wins and uh, we don't have to worry about, you know, recording things multiple times, trying different game modes. Uh, this deck is just a powerhouse and uh, it was super easy for me to win games with. So I'm really excited to bring this one to you and I'm very confident that you guys will find success using this deck as well. Uh, before we jump into it though, break down the cards and uh, get into the gameplay. If you haven't already subscribed to the channel, make sure to do so because we do bring you guys videos every single Monday. Um, and then sometimes every Wednesday, like this video will be coming out Wednesday. So I'm trying to pump out at least two videos for you guys a week. So be sure to subscribe so you don't miss out on that. And uh, if you haven't already, there's a link in the description below to my live Twitch channel. If you guys wanna click on that, follow that. Um, I am live every single Wednesday at 5.30 pacific time um and i also go live on friday nights kind of a random time frame but uh we play some call of duty so if you guys want to follow that on over there i'd really appreciate it and uh if you guys want to talk about you know more magic and stuff like that come see me live and well, we can chat um but with that being said let's jump right in guys let's talk about this deck and why i think it's so amazing um right now soul tie is a top tier deck as we're seeing it a lot right now and um i actually i follow magic on uh, twitter and i know they just posted um some of their quarterfinals and semifinals and stuff like that and uh, somebody who's doing really well in the tournament is running a version of soul tie mid-range and uh, is doing really really well i know uh Crocsy and stuff has been running this on his stream too um so i went ahead and said you know let me make a a strong version of my own i know i already posted a soul tie uh deck list uh, just last week it was more of a jank deck that i really wanted to tie lazav into with uro um, this one right here is a lot more serious this one will win you a lot more games um so let's go ahead and jump in and talk about the deck a little bit here so um kicking it off we have three aether gusts now this this is making its way back into a lot of tier one decks because everybody does seem to be running red or green or some variant of that um this typically uh used to be a dead card in, in you know some of your matchups uh, but right now aether gust is seeing a lot of mirror matchups aggro red uh, mono green decks um there's just so many decks running uh pretty much red or green that this is almost never a dead card anymore and it's really good value to run in the main board um, especially best of one um, up next we have agonizing remorse i did run thought erasure in this deck for a while uh, but i found out agonizing remorse to be a little bit better because of its exiling uh properties and we have been running like i said into a bunch of mirror matchups so we did want to take care of those uh pesky euros that we run um and get them out of the game completely so anything with escape this card is just super good uh getting rid of that uh, graveyard so agonizing remorse um takes the place of thought erasure this week so four of those and then up next we have four growth spirals this is a obvious one any sort of bant control uh any sort of rampy deck um, anything with a blue green pretty much in it is going to have growth spiral and it's going to have uro so those are two must-haves in the deck we're running four piece uro and growth spiral so you get the ramp extra card and with uro you get the life gain so gotta have those in the deck um and then we run three hydrid crises we used to run two of these in the deck but i upped it to three because um it's actually clutched us up a lot of different games guys in the end game if you're not up against counter spells um this card is so hard to come back from as an opponent um facing it your opponent you know is up against the wall you know it's, it's a close game you know you're going back and forth and then you go you just drop this hydroid crisis for five six and just refill your hand gain a bunch a bunch of life and now you got a big trampoline flyer out in the field that they got to deal with it's uh it, it almost always ends games especially if you have a, a nissa out on the field and your mana's doubled uh this can end games quickly guys um so three of those is pretty key already talked about uro running four of these got to have these in the deck uh especially for the life gain right now because seeing a lot of aggro matchups um speaking of aggro matchups it actually leads into our next few cards here uh cry of the canarium we run two of these 
Um, two of these because of its exiling purposes, um, just like Extinction Event. These two right here are board wipes and they, uh, they don't just kill uh, creatures, they actually uh, take them straight to exile. So uh, things like scorpions you're gonna see uh, that typically will do two damage to you uh, when they die are now um, irrelevant. They do not trigger anything um, on death. Um, Annex is on mono red, uh, don't trigger. Um, so extinction event and cry of the canary and we have two apiece uh because i found that we were running four extinction events and typically you know you'll, your opponent's not always running the same mana cost creatures odd or even um and sometimes you know extinction events not great and then you get a, a board with little creatures in it so you want cry of the canarium but then cry of the canarium is not great because sometimes you have opponents who are running bigger creatures and so you want extinction events so you want to run two of each give yourself a little bit of versatility um and i found that this works out really really well um and then here's where we get a little bit weird with the deck so i put in one pulchronos um pulchronos i don't even know how to say that i don't know how to speak english but anyways one of these i actually was able to draw this so many times and i know it's just luck and i know you guys aren't gonna have the same luck of drawing this every time especially if you're only running one of um but I wanted to just put this in the deck to see how how it played out um i wasn't sure what to do i had one extra you know slot for a card and i didn't know if i wanted four shark typhoons it just didn't really register to me as as great so i went ahead and put a polypronos in there and it is so good so good to the fact that i actually might uh might even drop in one more of these and run two so um you guys will see the gameplay footage coming up it's it's it actually clutched up a few different times so uh pokernos is amazing guys uh at least one of in this deck is great and then uh we go to tamio tamio actually will help you find your pokernos if you need it really bad um in certain matchups um you can dig with tamio uh, you can also return cards from your your graveyard i actually found out post recording that uh it's pretty great too if you you know you're missing your land drops if you get to your fourth land and you're stuck and you're stalled out um i've actually used tamio to just go into my graveyard twice pull out two land uh, make sure i hit my land drops you know so tamio is very versatile and uh her passive uh, ability of spells and abilities your opponent's uh, control can't cause you to discard or sacrifice permanence is is pretty solid too it, it, it helps you in a, a couple different matchups but uh, we run three of those. I know a lot of people only run two, but I, I'm a big fan of Tamio. I think uh, three is pretty good. Um, but if you do drop one, make sure to throw another uh, uh, Pokernos in there. So Nissa is next, guys. We run three Nissas as well. I had this as four, but uh, we kept over. Uh, we kept getting Nissa way too many times, having multiples in hand. So. We trimmed that down to three and it seems to be working out pretty great for us uh, but this is obviously the engine of the deck it uh it doubles your mana it um you know it ends games with uh overwhelming your opponent with creatures it does a really good job of protecting itself so nissa is a no-brainer it's kind of our main win con in this deck now shark typhoon here's where things get a little interesting guys if i could just give you my own word of advice here i tried playing shark typhoon hard casting it because Obviously, this uh, deck ramps really fast. So we were able to play Shark Typhoon early, almost two turns early, and uh, I thought it would be really great value to do so. But typically, guys, I wouldn't even say playing this on the field ever gives you more value than just cycling a shark. Um, I found out uh, the hard way. Uh, I, lose, I lost a couple games early on because of misplays with the Shark Typhoon. Um, so be sure to almost always cycle this. It's just my own personal advice I, that I found. Uh, playing this onto the field, you don't really get a whole lot of value because it's a lot of two drops if you're going to be playing non-creature spells. Um, and typically your Planeswalkers will already be on the field, so you're not going to get a ton of value out of it. Um, so be sure to cycle get yourself an extra card win the game other ways um and this is a really good early card too say if you're uh, facing aggro and you need to like stall them out a little bit just be, feel free to drop a little one one shark block that creature stall out a little bit get another card get ready to ramp up so um shark typhoon pretty solid here but three is good enough for me i think um and then we run two casualties of war just to really put the nail in the coffin on our opponent um uh, taking away their land um uh, is probably the the dirtiest part of this card is you take away their land um really sets them back a turn it, it really you know it really starts to 
take you and propel you ahead of your opponent by so much when you really take them back a turn and you're constantly ramping uh casualties of war very good card but really only want to run two because you don't want to have a whole bunch of those in hand it is our biggest you know a six drop it's it's pretty big and hefty guys so two of those is great uh, but that is the best of one version uh, of this deck guys i do have a best of two version i was playing as well it's a little bit different from this one um so the sideboard over here isn't great because i mean it's great it's good it could this definitely could be a best of three deck if you want to run this but i wanted to make the main board a little bit different to really uh, solidify the best of one quality so i made some changes um i do have a better best of two deck um if you guys want to talk about it maybe in stream if you guys want to stop by the, the twitch stream but let me go ahead and uh, move my head real quick so you can see the sideboard um again though the guys uh this there will be a link in the description below um it'll have the whole deck list for you um you can check it out there you could uh just copy paste that um and then we go into our lands um two castle vantresses is great uh for this deck as well as uh all your triumphs and all your shock lands but um i think you guys know the drill on the lands but uh, that is it guys that's the whole deck uh we had a lot of fun playing it like i said uh, we win quite a bit with this deck and it was pretty easy to get this video put together for you um, I hope you guys enjoy it and get some value out of it and then uh, but I think that's it um, nothing more I really want to say about it let's just go ahead and jump into the gameplay guys and then uh, we'll wrap it up at the end and talk about maybe some things we might change to the deck love to hear your thoughts in the comments as well but uh, let's jump into the gameplay and have some fun we'll see ya alright I'm, ex I'm excited to bring you guys this one I've been having a lot of fun with a version of this deck uh, mostly best of two, but obviously I want to bring you guys the best of one for the video here. Love this hand, but typically you need ramp to get into these cards, you know, to get full value out of them. I'm going to mulligan this hand. I got to be smart here. Another janky hand, but we're going to take it. Um, we'll drop the casualties here. And go right into agonizing remorse. Let me drop the volume of the music just a skosh. All right, let's see what our opponent's working with here. Mutate deck, huh? Hmm. Polkernose can deal with a lot of this stuff, but mutate's gonna be a problem. So we're gonna take away his mutate engine. Take away that polywog because he's going to be able to draw cards. We don't want that. Anything that gives him a draw engine, you want to try to get rid of, typically. Let's just drop another triome here. And then uh, we have an Aether Gust available uh, to hit maybe this uh, Mutate with. What does this do when it mutates? Target creature deals X damage to any target where X is the number of times the creature is mutated. Yeah, that could be pretty annoying just gonna deal one damage but it could be annoying the more and more it mutates and this would slow him down exponentially but yeah let's do that let's do that we may not get another chance so we made him waste a lot of mana on that play so got a big 6-6 six, six out on the board i don't know if they're gonna have a play to deal with it if they have heartless act obviously all they can do is take uh counters off of my creature they can't actually kill it so we're looking good just like so all right let's do this because i don't want to take another hit of damage here let's go green and then what do we need here? We need three, right? So we're not going to be able to fight, unfortunately. Let's just do Nissa Shakes the World and swing in with our 3 3 token. We'll leave our uh, Polkernos back because, uh, for defense purposes, yeah. Yeah, for defense. I don't want anything getting through. He has a Mori the Collector, so we know his deck's obviously all creature based. Um, I wonder if he's gonna put that into his hand this turn. I'm fine with that if he does. All 
All right, deals one here, so deals three. Maybe I'm always oh, got death touch. I forgot about the vampire having death touch. That's a good play. That's a really good play. That's a strong mutate. Wow, I didn't even didn't even think about that play. Let's just go ahead and scry now. That's a good find. Um, do I bin it though? How many do I have in the graveyard? Four? I could bin it and then play it from graveyard right away. Um, if we find something. Uh, oh wait, no, I'm sorry. We're not we're not surveilling. I had I had another card in my deck where we surveilled, so that's why I was thinking surveil. So we're gonna keep that on top. That is not a surveil. That could have been bad. Uh we will take the triumph again. I don't know. I don't know if I want to lose the triumph again. He's gonna do his uh ability killing one of our creatures obviously the land maybe we don't give him an option to hit a land this turn i don't feel like sacrificing a land for no reason you know let's just let's just hold it up let's hold it up until uro comes out this is a tricky one I didn't think about this having death touch, man. That's just like when you give your mayhem devil death touch with the call of death dweller. That is such a sick combo. You just start machine gunning everything for one point of damage. It's pretty disgusting. If I can find another aether guest though, we'd be in really good shape. How many do we need to escape our uh, Polkronos here? We need six other cards. Yeah, let's just enter tapped. So we have enough to play the Uro, but that would mean getting rid of our Pokernos. But I really want him. Uh, I really want him because... Because we could fight this and kill it. And if I play the Uro, it's really not that beneficial because he's just going to tap this, dealing the damage to it. I think we're just going to pass turn here. I could just sacrifice a basic land here if I wanted to. Could be a good play. We're going to sacrifice a blue land here. And the reason being is because I want to be able to scry. This not only sets up our poker nose from uh, coming back from the graveyard, losing a land, but um, being blue, uh, we we can scry now. Whenever this creature mutates, exile cards from the top of your library into exile non-land permanent. Put that card onto the battlefield. Okay. That's a pretty good find. That's a pretty solid find. He has flying now too, so he just might go over the top and forget about even killing my island. Yep. Does, okay. I respect it. Aether Ghost! Is this still the colors? It is still the colors we need, okay. Aether Gust is solid. So is Shark Typhoon, but I don't know if we have the time to play it right now. All right, so do we Uro now? One, two, three, four. No, we still, oh yeah, he didn't kill our island like I anticipated. So we're gonna have to Aether Gust now then. Let's do it, let's just Aether Gust now. And that way we can play um, our Uro without killing our Polkernos. But it's almost like you have to pick one or the other. You're not. I'm not really going to get a chance here to play both. So I might need to just play Polkernos here so I could kill the Dirge Bat. That honestly has to be the play, right? Yeah. 
I think that's the play. We're gonna have to forget about Uro. Because we can't have him having creatures on the board to mutate with. Once he has creatures on the board to mutate with, we're in trouble. All right, and I, I think he, did he put those cards at the bottom? I think he put them on top. I would expect him to, right? Yeah, he did. He put them on top. So he's going to uh, continuously try and uh, do his thing, but uh, we're going to keep killing his creatures. I can't fight this because it's just going to kill me with that touch. That would be not smart. So let me see what I got here. So we got, this is even. That's good. These are even, so we can actually do ex uh, extinction event on the vampire by choosing odd, and we're good to go. So we don't have to engage there. Uh, do we win here? No, no, we don't win here. Pretty close. Pretty close. All right. Well, he says we win. Okay, works for me. We got it done, guys. Poker knows for the win. We love it. Love to see it. What a solid game one, guys. Poker nose for the win is sick. We only have one right now. That actually made me want to add more, but got to remember that it's very, a very situational card. And we have so much removal in our deck as it is, so I don't know. We've drew the other one. Oh, wow. We drew him again. Opening hand. That's nutty. All right. We'll take it. That's actually crazy, guys. Fervent champion. All right, we got a pretty decent hand here for this matchup, I think. Uro's gonna gain us a little bit of life. Going against Mardu Knights, huh? Okay, okay, okay. Hit him with one of these. Oh, I just realized my music stopped playing. I'm sorry, guys, let me get your background music going. All right, Polkernos is going to do work in this matchup, I think. I would really like to draw some uh, removal too, like a Cry. A Cry would be super good right now. Cry of the Canarium. All right, so let's just put up uh, our boy here for defense. Next turn, we can Casualties of War, which would be nice. Right? Am I doing the math on that right? Four, five, six? Yeah, we're doing the math right. I typically don't do the math right, guys, so... Man, new new uh, M21 coming out, guys. What are you most excited about? Let me know. I'm, I'm excited to, for the uh, the set to come out. I cannot wait. I already pre-ordered my 50 packs, so I'll be doing a big opening. Probably on stream. If you guys want to watch that, I am live every single Wednesday. Let's see. Link in the description below, by the way. I'm just trying to think here. Uh, he's definitely going to do something cheeky. I know he is. So do we go for the Crusader? That's the question. Or do we just let it go? I think we just let it go, because then we're going to cry anyways. I don't know. Do we want to take that much damage, though? Oh, wait. We can't block the Crusader, huh? Forgot it had Menace. Yep. He did something fishy. Okay. I should have known better. Okay. So that's good to know. I actually wasn't aware of that. I did not know that the Polkadot was uh, immune to the uh, Death Touch. That's really good to know. So he doesn't, I guess the way it's worded makes sense. He doesn't actually take damage. He just uh, loses a counter. So yeah, he never took damage technically. So that doesn't actually work. That's crazy. We don't have a double black source yet. I just realized that. That's crazy. Uh, let me swing in first. And uh, Do I swing in first? Or do I just go down to three? I guess we just go down to three. It's fine. Cause I didn't want to swing in there and maybe get blocked and then have something weird happen. Oh, we get our tokens back too. Man, we are learning a lot this game. I did not know that we get our tokens back. I thought because it dealt damage, we would have lost them. All right, here we go. 
I guess it didn't deal damage, did it? Alright, we could do a big Hydroid Crisis here. I think that's pretty solid. Um, we're not going to hold a lot of value, obviously, out of casualties. That's just one land. Yeah, I think Hydroid Crisis is good. I love this new uh, hotkey, guys. If you actually double Q, you get to uh, do all your mana at once here. Um, do I want to do this, though? That's the question. I do... Let's just do it for four, though. Let's just do it for four. Keep one mana floating. And, of course, it chose black mana, so that was a waste. I was going to throw down this and use uh, Growth Spiral, but... Oh, you know what? I already played a land. Gosh, guys, I'm sorry. My brain is just malfunctioning today. So we should have hydroid there for five. It didn't matter. We got the same amount of life points and cards, but our crisis is just one, one uh, attack smaller. Yeah, that's GG's anyways. I figured as much. This deck is so broken, guys. It is so good. Um, hopefully we can keep this win streak going. Otherwise, you can call me a liar, but I do feel like this deck is pretty sick. I've been playing it best of three and it's just been an absolute house, but let's keep it rolling. All right, guys, I'm going to keep it 100% honest with you guys. I did have to cut one game out just now. We ended up losing, but uh, I cut it out for a very good reason. Um, it was almost 20 minutes long, and our opponent, we uh, actually agonizing remorse their opening hand, and they had four counters in their opening hand. And so we basically just played stalemate and uh, kept drawing cards, kept drawing cards, and wasn't able to play much because our opponent would just counter everything so we were trying to play around it and it was just it was just super lengthy a super lengthy game it took a long time and the outcome wasn't great so just had to uh say no go on that part of the video because it would have taken up most of the video and i want to see i want to get as much gameplay in for you guys as possible uh obviously the uh reclamation right but mystical is kind of annoying so is aether guest But those are not that good without their reclamation, so. Man, I'm going to make him really mad right now, huh? About to make him really mad. Ooh, back at me, huh? Respect. Respect, sir. I really like that play. This is definitely a tier one deck, uh, ladies and gentlemen. So we're up against it at the moment. We are indeed up against it. All right, so we can play around this. Uh, as long as we have three extra mana, we can play around it. He's probably going to play it, though, against my Uro right now, so... Let's go ahead and get this countered and get this out of the way. Yes, sir. Here you go. Bro Spiral. Drops the Fabled. Okay. We're both hurting for a hand here. <laughs> both almost out of cards already. Just attacking each other's hands. He ops, okay. As long as he doesn't find a reclamation, I'm okay. He is ahead on the land game, though. It's unfortunate. Mystical Dispute. What do I want to lose? Do I want to lose... Probably just want to lose this, huh? Go ahead. Dispute it. Dispute it. Yes, I love it. I love it. Resolve. Leaves my Aether Gust open for uh, Wilderness. Let's go. Love to see it. Counterspell, really? That's not good. Oh, let's go. Okay. Aether Gust. Um, that's actually not that great in this matchup, is it? Not really. It's not a great it's not a great card for the matchup as tough as it is for me to say that but 
Let's just keep throwing cards into the graveyard for our Uro. Wow, we're getting really we're getting really lucky on our opponent uh, side because he's drawing a lot of lands. Uh, let's cancel that actually. Let's uh, let's wait because we might be cycling that. We'll see. Now nah, we're playing it. Don't want to miss the land drop. Another land. Yikes. Opponent is getting flooded. Wish I could say sorry, but I mean, do I care that much? I mean, I'm pretty happy about it. <laughs> We're That's one of the best decks out there right now, guys, is uh, Wilderness Reclamation. So a win is a win over Reclamation, I say so. And that's just mad respect for the deck. Like, I mean, no disrespect. I love Reclamation. I love playing it. But I do love uh, Sultai a little bit more. Oof. Oof. I have nothing for that. Oh, okay. He just quit. That's weird. I had nothing for it at the moment. Um, he probably could have came back, honestly. It made it, uh, made it a worthwhile game. Because he would have had a ton, a ton of spells, I'm assuming. I don't know. Well, well, we'll take it. That's a win, guys. On to the next one. Man, I'm having a lot of fun with this deck. Uh, this deck is solid. I'm so glad that it can't, you know, uh, Soul Tie is kind of back in the, the rotation for sick decks, you know. I just, I love it. It's so good. This is a solid hand. Um, I don't know what I'm up against. I play first. I'm keeping this one. I haven't got to play Tamio yet for you guys, so... Let's go ahead and do that. Let's find ourselves a Nissa. I know last week I posted a uh, Sultai video. Um, if you guys haven't already checked that one out, uh, be sure to do so. It's pretty unique. Uh, definitely not as good as this one, but uh, we had Lazav in it and uh, a couple other cards but uh lazav paired with uro is pretty nasty and uh tamio uh helps a lot getting lazav on the battlefield and putting uro in the graveyard it's a really really cool combo but uh you guys should check that video out um keep in mind at the time i was still playing with the deck so we didn't have tamio and whatnot in it but it's really really cool if you guys want to see something a little bit more unique a little bit more janky up against mono green it looks like so aether gust is going to be solid here aether gust is going to work great mono green doesn't really scare me as far as matchups go so happy to play against mono green i think unless i'm missing something here but i do feel like we're going to do pretty good against it Thrashing Brontodon. Now that's a card. Ooh, hoo, hoo. What do we got here? We got an odd. We got an even and we got an odd. That's a pretty solid odd though. Pretty freaking solid odd. Yeah, he's not a fan of mine right now. Feels bad. Extinction event is disgusting. All right, so we can kill that and we can kill a land um, with this in Casualties of War on the next play. Do we have the right mana though? Black, black, green, green. Yep, we're good. We are good to go. Really set our opponent back on the land drop. That's a, that's a big move. Oh, another questing beast though. We don't like to see that. With no way of really getting rid of it either. Uh, hopefully we can play Uro here. Not yet. Not yet, huh? We can do Tamio and then play Uro to get some health. 
And then maybe, oh no, he doesn't have to. Uh, I was going to say maybe he focuses his attack on Tamiya, but Questing Beast is ridiculous and doesn't need to do that. So we really only get one shot with Tamiya, so we might as well. Ooh, actually, do we hit him with the casualties next turn? Yeah, let's hit him with the casualties next turn. I think that's a much better play. Could die here, though. Depends on what he plays, but if he's got like a buff or something, four, five, six, he needs to get four more points of damage. It's going to be tricky. That's actually only benefiting my casualties even more. It looks like he's struggling to hit his land drops, too, so that's really good for us. Keeps this Paradise Druid back. What's he gonna do here? Nope, he's bringing it in. I thought so. Uh, let's just take the hit first. Make him think we have something. Alright, we're good to go. Good to go. Now the question is, can we play Nyssa as well? Let me see here. So if we drop the land, play Nyssa, that leaves us with four double green so green green two two yeah we can play it and we can play casualties casualties of war no 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 that's my planeswalker what are you thinking what are you thinking And that, honestly, should do it. That should do it. Our opponent's on two lands. They're hurting right now. You can tell with their, their land drops. They're hurting really bad, so. We're in really good shape. And then we can uh, we can bring back Uro this turn, gaining some more health. And then Uro will, will actually resolve onto the battlefield, so if he can't deal with it, we're just gonna keep gaining health over and over. Gem Razor. I do not have an enchant or an artifact on the field, so that's good. Ooh, that's pretty disgusting, though. Let's see what we got here. What do we got for land? Six, seven, eight, nine, ten. That's a pretty solid crisis. That's a pretty solid crisis right there. Yikes. Drop a Trium on him. I gotta say thanks to that. Yeah, that's pretty... That was pretty gross. That's gotta be GG's, right? Gotta be. We have the air covered. We have the ground covered. Our opponent says good game. What a good sport. What a good sport. That Tamiyo was pretty clutch. I didn't even think to bring back the... Uh, the casualties of war, honestly, until I saw my graveyard and actually looked through it. That was pretty solid. Ooh, one more game, guys. Let's play one more game and see if we can't get to Platinum Tier 2 with this deck real quick. Let's go. Platinum Tier 2, here we come. So far, so good. It's looking good, guys. Um, I really think this new... This new deck, this best of one, it, it's really solid. Like I said, I had this geared towards uh, best of three at first, and I figured out a way to make it a little bit stronger for best of one. I think this is really, really good. We're going up against Luris here. Uh, big time creature based. I'm going to keep this hand because we have Cry, so. Can't be too upset at that guy, uh, that hand. Um, do we keep the land? I want to hit my land drops, but we do need blue source, but we do have a Fabled, so. Up against Luris. Gonna be a lot of small creatures here. Looks like we're going against Sacrifice. Great. That's the one I didn't want to see. Cry of the Canarium is really solid here, though, because it's going to exile. So things like Scorpion aren't going to trigger their death effect, which is really, really great. Are we on Mono Black? Mono black sacrifice. Ooh, now we have a big question to ourselves here. Do we want to do it now? Because if we do it now, we can get rid of that cat. Say if he has an oven in hand, that would be a really big hit, but it could also be super low value if you do it now. We could get a lot more out of it. 
But if he has an oven, we're, we're kind of screwed. This could be super greedy, man. It could be, it could be. Yeah, I'm going to play it now. I got to get that cat off the field out of the game completely. Like I said, that just shuts down oven. An oven would be a nightmare to deal with. We have casualties of war, obviously, but that's not for a while. And to take that much damage over and over again. Not worth it. Let's just do this. Get our blue source. Because he does have red, so... Aether Gust might be good here. I didn't expect that red and white mana source to come out. So what are we, what are we talking here? We're talking... Claim the Firstborn, we're talking some Rakdos Knight action. Hmm. Let's do this first. Yeah, we'll pay the two life. Gotta keep that gust up just in case something weird goes on. Let's end our turn. More than likely, though, the Luris is coming out and he's going to drop the cat back onto the field. Let's, let's find out. Why would he need the white source, though, you know? That's really throwing me for a loop. Okay, he does not play Luris. I'm really happy about that, actually. Man, do we just play a Krasis here, but... I think we play a crisis here. A three. Yeah, might as well. Let's gain some life, draw a card, all that jazz. Gives gives us a decent block or two, so. That's huge. That is so huge, guys. All of these are one drops. Oh, that is so good. And he plays Luris. Forget about it. Forget about it. That is going to be the biggest extinction event I have ever hit. If he if he plays Luris right now, like I think he's going to, and bring back that cat, biggest extinction event ever. All right, it's not the biggest event ever, but. We can go after his hand first, get the Luris out of it, and then next turn hit him with the big extinction event. Ugh, call the Death Dweller though, it's pretty, pretty gross too. And then we could just uh, Shark Typhoon for one, blocking the health a little bit, getting another card. No attacks. I don't know, man. We're running a little low on health, so us not hitting a land drop there really hurts because I would have liked to play that the same turn as that Agonizing Remorse, but. We missed too many land drops, unfortunately. The only thing that would make this better is if he played a Mayhem double right now. That would be... Awesome. All right, do we Shark Typhoon for one? I think we do. I don't really think we need it. the Shark Typhoon sitting here for anything else. Kind of wasted value if we don't. Hit another Agonizing Remorse. I'm down for that. This will coax his uh, Call of Death Dweller out of his hand too. Or whatever else he's got in his hand. It'll coax him to play it. Because uh, we just cleared out his board a little bit. So he's going to want to get some of those creatures back. Boom. Called it. Called it. And here's where we say goodbye. 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 He has instant speed. What is he holding on to? Pretty sure that's a wrap. I think we got our diamond tier two, or I'm sorry, platinum tier two. This has lifelink? No? Okay, no it doesn't. 
Where's my lands though, you know? Let's see what he's sitting on. What is it that you're sitting on here? It's instant speed, so... Is that instant speed? It's sorcery speed. Oh, I guess this has an effect on it, okay. Wondering why the game was uh, stuttering in between plays. There we go, that's a land. All right, so we could take care of his white source and his creature with casualties. Um, I am just gonna hold my uh, crisis up here for a blocker because that would be super greedy to swing in, especially when we're at eight health. And he's got a cauldron familiar. That's not too bad. Not too worried about that. That's a good find. We want to keep hitting lands here. Let's do destroy land. Destroy. Oh, we can hit them both. Oh, that's disgusting. Oh, I chose the wrong land. I was clicking way too fast. That's fine. That's fine. I should have totally hit this land over here, but it is what it is. I forgot that his uh, land pad was a uh, enchantment technically. So to double up was just oh, perfection. Uh, let's go on in. He can't play the cat because he has no no food. Yeah, I thought I thought we'd see a scoop there. Full tilt, it's over. I I'm really happy with uh, how this deck performed today, guys. So the only thing we really got our butts kicked against was counter spell magic, like I said, and uh, it was a 20 minute game back and forth. Uh, just trying to play around the counter spells was just it's tough with any deck really um counter spells is good against pretty much everything except for aggro so uh, not much we could have done there but let's go ahead and uh, break down what we thought of the deck and uh, close it out all right that's it for the video guys i hope you guys really enjoyed the content and uh if you did enjoy the content don't forget to subscribe for weekly content just like this like i was saying before uh, if you made it this far thank you so much for your support i really do appreciate it um uh, Let's talk about maybe some things we changed to the deck real quick. It should be really fast because like I said, this deck is, you know, a powerhouse. So I really wouldn't change a whole lot to it. Um, the only thing I noticed though, like I said, Pokronos uh, was clutch. It was so good. Um, might want to think about throwing one or two more into this deck, guys. And if you do, I would cut one Tamiyo for sure because uh, Tamiyo was great. It was a great card and I'm a big fan of hers, like I said before. But if we had to cut anything, one Tamiyo would be what I would do to, to throw one of those in. And if you are a, like me and a big fan of this card, you want to throw in three of them, cut one Hydroid Crisis too while you're at it. Because like I said, Hydroid Crisis is one of those cards that really end the game. So um, no, no real need to have, you know, a whole bunch of them. You don't want multiples in hand. So cutting one of those wouldn't hurt your deck too bad. Uh, but that's really all I would change to it, guys. Um, had a lot of fun playing it. I'm gonna be playing this deck probably until the end of the season is up, um, until the next uh, M21 comes out. But uh, I'm really excited about that, guys. But let me know what you guys would change. Um, I'd love to hear your comments, uh, what you thought of the deck, uh, if you guys like it or not, and uh, what you guys wanna see next, maybe. Uh, comment all that down below. I'd, I'd love to get your feedback and uh, talk with you guys. So um, thank you so much for watching the video, and uh, we'll catch you guys on next week's uh, or Monday's video. And uh, we'll see you then. Bye.